Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm going to try to take off my filters. Um, no, the filters are the best part. <laughs> yeah, but the reason I'm taking them off is, uh, hold on a minute. It's hard to do this. Okay. That's why I'm taking the filters off, you see? <laughs> so you got a lot of people here. Hello. Yay for real people. People make okay. the best backgrounds. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Um, so. So uh, Ambika, Archana, and Sean, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Sean. Uh, I work at GUI, and uh, we're excited to talk to you today. Uh, yeah. And tell them, you know, you developed GUI and, you know. Yeah, like, who the hell am I? I'm some American dude who lived in India for 18 years. Uh, I worked at Microsoft for, you know, 10 years and met Archna at MSR and helped start that organization in 2014. Uh, I went then went off and made a job site uh, focused on informal sector for 11 years. And then for the last two and a half, three years, Archon and I have been working on something called Dara, which was a community connection platform that had a bunch of really interesting interactive GPT-3 plus deepfake file powered um, Turing test passing bots. And that kind of inspired us to make GUI as a platform that allows artists and creators and businesses to really experiment very easily and quickly with a whole mess of generative AI tools. And so we're going to show those off today and um, can't wait to see what you think. Okay. And um, Archana, why don't you? <laughs> sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Archana. I um, you know, grew up in Seattle and moved, uh, grew up in Bangalore, moved very recently to Seattle, Bangalore in India. My my practice has been at the intersection of art and technology and community. Um, and as Sean said, we met at Microsoft Research. And then um, while he was working with the job site, I set up something called Jaga, which really brought together um, artists, designers, and uh, various stakeholders in the city to, to bring creative practice and technology practice to public spaces across um, Bangalore and, um, you know, uh, co-founded a festival, a technology and arts festival in India, um, big one, and it's coming up actually next weekend. Um, and yeah, so it starts on the 10th of March and continues till the 26th of March in Bangalore. Lots of hybrid events. I'll share a link to that um, to that one. So a lot, lot of lot of intersection um, with Sean's work, um, but primarily in the art and technology space. That's that's me. Okay, and Ambika? But Ambika I, is in India, so it's very late there. It's like midnight. Almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Elena. I'm Ambika, and I've been working with the GUI team now for a couple of months, and uh, I'm a tech artist. So I was originally a museum designer for about 10 years, and then now I've kind of moved into technology since the last four or five years. Uh, and uh, I have a great job with GUI. I get to play with AI the whole day. So <laughs> it's super exciting. And I was a processing fellow in 2021 uh, and with the Processing Foundation that does creative coding. And in 2020, I was a fellow for uh, Chinar and Kamya's program with Be Fantastic. Uh, so that's that's me. <laughs> okay. And joining us is Dr. Neo Christopher Chung. For those of you who don't know him, he's um, working and uh, here at the University of Warsaw, and, he, and I'll let him introduce himself very quickly. Hi, um, my name is Neil Christopher Chow. I do machine learning research and also create AI art uh, using some of the machine learning techniques that I develop. And I'm also very interested in generally, you know, teaching and co-developing. Uh, related works. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, and he's here. I, I, I wouldn't bore all my students with my introduction. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's he he, he commutes between Brislav and Warsaw on different weeks, so he's about four hours away right now in Poland. Okay, so that's so that's the introductions, but you know if we had to do that, and so take it away, please. Yeah, um, thank you. I, I feel like Ambika is also underselling herself. She's also by far the best prompt writer to create create visual artifacts of anybody that I've ever met. And you'll see some of that handiwork today. Um, our thought for today was to give you a, a little sense of like uh, of what GUI is and what it's about, and then some kind of walkthrough um in terms of how I, I can share the screen and then I'll pass it off to you Ambika just to oh, start okay. um sure. uh just to, to you know just in terms of an agenda a little high level view of like what are we trying to do with GUI what can it do and then uh we'll show you some examples of the types of outputs and the types of tools that that we can offer and then we have some sort of deep dives in terms of how to make those work. And, and the second part is intended to be like, you know, you push us where you want us to go and where you want more details and, and questions. Um, so with that, uh, I'll get into a little bit of slideware and then hope you, you, hopefully you can see some interesting stuff and then I'll pass it off to Ambika. Uh, give me one second. Uh, I hope this is the right screen. Yeah, I think it's the right screen. Okay. Um, are you guys seeing something that says make GUI plus art of ha hack? Yes. That's great. Okay. So, you know, what's our mission? We're trying to figure out how do we make generative AI really simple. And the way that we do that is we're essentially not building our own models, but trying to make it super easy for anybody to basically pull all of the latest and most interesting, both visual audio and sort of text-based LLM stuff. Um, and then make interesting workflows that you can share with other people. So that not only are you basically making interesting content, but one of the things that I think makes GUI really interesting is that the, we have very much the model of, you know, that the prompts and the techniques that were used to basically create that artifact are immediately viewable by everybody else uh, if you want to share it. And then hopefully that anybody else can go and tweak and find and kind of alter those things as kind of an iterative piece and an iterative open source way to make that happen. So, um, you know, at a high level, I feel like there's just some definitions here of like, when we say generative AI, we really mean these machine learning things that are making new uh, creative artifacts, right? And then there's a whole bunch of things that are happening around how content generation is getting better, how communities, how quality is increasing. Uh, you'll see a bunch of stuff in terms of variety, like, you know, we host like 15 different image generation models, and each one of them are good at certain things and not so good at others. Um, and then, it, you know, the part that is most interesting is, is basically how these things get personalized. And so we have some stuff that you'll see in terms of automated ways to create that personalization. And then obviously you as, as creators can, can do a lot there too, in terms of putting in your own content. So, you know, at a high level, the industry has been kind of doing stuff with kind of like, you know, various people out there have been trying to take advantage of AI pieces, but we figured it would be, I'm sorry, it would be more interesting to show you the sorts of things that, come on, um, that in terms of that you can make directly on top of GUI. And so these are all kind of example pieces of content that we allow anybody to make today. Um, and so, Ambika, why don't you show off the first one, or you can talk over this one. So this is like a video that Ambika made, I think, yesterday with some of our video tools, of, which is just 16 seconds. Um, so, yeah, this is also this is a very, I think this is such a great tool. This is my favorite tool. Uh, I mean, I can keep extolling about it, but uh, basically it allows you to use stable diffusion uh, with camera movements. Uh, so you can build like little narratives like see this one is like going through the city uh, where it's Bombay, but like somewhere in the middle, it starts like, uh, I mean, in this, it's a little short, but it starts looking a bit more like a European city, primarily probably Warsaw. I don't know if you can recognize some things here. And it's mm -hmm. also panning upwards a little bit besides the zoom. So it's fairly powerful in that sense that you can really uh, build quick, interesting narratives uh, just with the uh, 
with a couple of prompts uh, in in the right places. And, and we'll get deeply into the how to, but we wanted to give you guys just a little background of like what these are. So we've got another one where you can really take anybody's Twitter handle and then just a, 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 a an image prompt. And then we basically do the code to go take whatever photo is associated with that particular Twitter handle. In this case, it's Elon Musk. We do some face repositioning things and you can adjust all of that. You can adjust the prompts and then you can basically take anybody in the world and sort of put them on this auto-generated picture. And then the part that's interesting is if you've wanted to make that into a, a piece of work that's inside of your own stuff, all of this is immediately available as API calls. Um, and so all of this, not only can you, you know, tweak the prompts at a kind of a, a GUI level, you you can also uh by by graphical user interface level, but you can also basically unpack uh all of the API calls behind it. Um, and that's true for everything that you're seeing here. Um, so as another one, you know, this is an example where we've sort of enabled to make it really easy to do these things. And so this is the rock talking about the climate crisis. Climate crisis is a big challenge that we are facing, and it is not going away soon. We can still reverse climate change through technology and human intervention. We need. And then, you know, just to give you a sense of like, you know, that one of the, the things that you're basically making happen is, you know, you basically put in the text that you want him to say. Um, and then, uh, you know, whatever video you're using as the basis. And so that's the abstraction level, right, that you get to kind of work with here. So you can focus on the content, not on all the code to basically have make that happen. Um, you're going to get deeper into this, but these are the types of, you know, images that you can go ahead and create. And so we've got a lot of really deep work across many different image creation tools. So you get Dolly, you get a bunch of flavors of stable diffusion, um, and then the ability to really compare, you know, if you want the same prompt and you want to see, well, which model really works best for what I'm trying to do, this is a really good way and a really good tool to basically make that happen. Um, one of the things that kind of inspired us here is, is this idea of interactive video bots. And so this was one that was created um, just via a long form GPT-3 script talking about an Indian parliamentarian. So this is Hukum Singh. And what's interesting is that anybody can talk to Hukum Singh by using Dara or, you know, as you can see by things like WhatsApp. And then he gives really, you know, kind of interesting responses. Um, so here, again, you can ask this question of, is, is it truly democratic? And then the creator here has put in this sort of long form script describing, describing this character and then the voice in the video behind it. Um, and then, you know, he gives really interesting answers. Yes, right? India is a democratic nation. The constitution of India guarantees us the right to choose our own leaders and representatives through free and fair. But I won't get into the whole thing, but he gives a kind of nuanced answer of like, you know, how India has fared over time. And so, you know, in the ability for you guys to make bots that make political statements, we think this is a particularly, uh, perhaps interesting one. Um, and we've had a bunch of other artists, if you go into, you know, uh, Dart Network rad bots that have built 30, 40 different characters that you can interact with and others can interact with to basically show off these perspectives. Um, Climate crisis is a big challenge. That's we not are. what I want to do. Um, the other thing is we've been working with some um, Gates Foundation folks. Um, and so really to take kind of um, the best practices that from like the Ministry of Agriculture and also health ministries, and then use that as in, you know, which are these long thousand page documents that, you know, give farmers advice about how they can do farming or public health care workers, public public health center workers advice to perhaps pregnant mothers, usually based on like WHO guidelines. And so what we've done is we've made those things available just as like WhatsApp bots. And so again, if you've got a set of documents that represent, say, your own personal histories or, you know, any published pieces, this allows others to really interrogate and ask those questions in like a chat GPT-like style, but against documents that you can control. 
Um, so it doesn't hallucinate in that sense of it's just limited in terms of the domain of the stuff that you're providing. And then finally, we do a bunch of stuff around kind of like automated, you know, content creation where you can just sort of enter a query and then we create based on looking at everybody else that's ranking well for that query, the stuff you should put on your page if you want to rank well. So as you get to the point where you want the world to know about these things, those things may also be useful. Uh, Sean, Sean froze. Um, I'll just keep going. So the way you should, um, and come on. And so this is sort of the conceptual diet. You should think about what GUI does, which is there's this whole mess of generative AI tools. And if there's one out there that's just come out that we don't support, please let us know. And then what we're trying to do is basically be this layer on top that allows people to access and compose all of them. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, that's the kind of like background piece. And then we have a bunch of stuff that Ambika can get into much more deeply about, you know, how to make uh, animation pieces, how to use our image creation tool, the whole bunch of like prompting guides, you know, how to, you know, go, if I'm going further, how to adjust quality of those images, how to do things like upscaling on top of the platform. Um, and then, you know, how to do AI image editing, how to use our LLM tools. And then finally, if you want to do stuff with your own documents, you can. So that's all of the content that we're going to cover. Um, but but that's really it. And so I'll kind of pause now and with a sense of where do you guys want to go? Well, I have one question. Um, have yeah. you integrated control net yet into your stability? We have not. We've been looking at it. We do not have control net yet. Um, but I know that allows for things like poses. We've got some things that are similar to it, like image to image. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, there, there's some earlier versions of what ControlNet and, and Stable Diffusion, but uh, not yet. We okay. Can. The reason I'm saying that is because I'm playing around with ControlNet now, and it's really a big leap of faith for me uh, in terms of pushing what I need cinematic AI to do better. Just so okay. you know, I'm, I'm very enthused about it. And I just thought I would share that with you since we've talked about these kinds of things. I just wanted to say that it's like, oh God, another thing. But this this really wow. is very important incremental um, yeah. movement. I it's think. super interesting. Yeah, no, we've got Instruct Picks to Picks, which came out, I think, two weeks earlier. Um, and so, you know, some of those things, it offers a bunch of the similar functionality. <laughs> but it's like we've integrated at this point like 30 different models we can no, integrate I, I, in like like and it's it my point is it's fast for us to do it I it doesn't it. take a lot of work it doesn't okay. take a lot of work. And, and that's that's kind of the whole point is like there's a wave of new cool shit that's coming out all the time and a big part of what we're trying to do is say that stuff is available to you here yeah yeah i know i know okay i just so i just wanted to slip that in because otherwise i could have sent you in a, a text about it but i, I thought i'd say yeah. it now no, so, cool. Go ahead. That's my wish list. But um, yes, so please continue. No, no. At this point, I, I think we wanted to get a little sense of like, where do you, where would be useful for us to go? Uh, and which parts do we want to kind of dive into? Um, um, because provide a lot of content of like ways to basically, you know, make image and video generation and 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 these other tools so we can go deep on that if you'd like to do that um but we're we're trying to be cognizant of what does the audience want okay so in, in you know I, I i can say for sure people are going to want video generation but before we go into video generation um for the pagan group is there anything here that you saw from what we just talked about that makes is something? Um, yeah, this would be the conversational part. Okay, wait, wait, come come over here. Just walk over here. Hi. This is Ivana, who's one of the team leaders Hi. of group two. <laughs> and they brainstorming. Uh, yeah, so the, um, the conversational part, definitely. And we are also wondering about um, voices, voice generation. So generating, um, I mean, there was in the video some voice already, but can it be in a voice of somebody like who's a sample we have, for example? Okay. Uh, and so right now, uh, 
well, we can dive into it. We've got a lip syncing piece, and then we support both um, uh, we support both Google and uh, another firm called um, Uber Duck, which is one of the more common kind of uh, synthesis platforms. And so with via them, basically, yes, if we get like a series of 20 minute samples, we can basically then compose that and you can put in an arbitrary voice, right? Uh, if you've got the samples associated with that and then use that with a deep fake algorithm to basically make a bunch of output. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to ask that, thanks. But at a high level, yes, those things are possible. Uh, and then you were talking about the conversational part. I can, I can kind of give you a, a, a little demo of that you'd like to see, or Ambika, do you have content on that one? Why, why don't you show your piece and then I'll, I'll kind of fill in. Oh, okay. So, because the conversations on mail were a bit more about the animation and image generation, I think is, yeah, do you want No problem, I, I'll do it then. I, I've been very yeah. deep into it just in the last couple of days, so I feel sure, like. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I can show off there if you like. Um, give me a second. One second, guys. Uh -huh. And then Gabe, if there's anything that comes to mind for you after he shows this, you can. Or, 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 but if there's not, you don't have to, you can ask him if there's any kind of blender or, or you can, that question about movement, you can just ask him. So this is the conversational uh, kind of recipe. This is, you can think of this as like the back end, And then we've hooked this up uh basically into whatsapp um and so you can connect to it you can also do things like add it to an instagram page to sort of driving the interactions there or a facebook page um and so the way that it works um and so what we've done here is is the customer setting is really uh oh, sorry this is the wrong uh url uh give me one second I was on our test site, not the real. Um, so what we've done is we're working with, uh, you can think of them, they're a, a site called Digital Green. And so what Digital Green does is they uh, basically work with farmers uh, all across India. They're in a couple hundred thousand villages, um, but they also essentially work uh, with the government. And they have essentially a, a series of documents, which are these PDF files that are a combination of like tables, um, data. So like, you know, this is the pocket handbook guide to wheat cultivation in India. It's a 40 page document that has all of the latest advice. If you're a farmer trying to figure out, um, you know, how you should be farming for wheat. And then what we've been working with them on is you can basically ask any questions that, you know, in real time, what we do is we take all of these documents, we shove them in via OpenAI text embeddings and put them into a vector database for the geeky people out there. And then we allow essentially you to search it. Um, and so Whitefly is a pest that's in India. And so it's basically creating an answer uh, around that. And then, so I can do things well, like, what can I do about Wi-Fi? Um, and then, so, you know, and what happens here is it takes this question that I've have, it then takes the documents that I've got, that I've put in here, it does that embedding, and then it runs essentially chat GPT uh, and a little bit of a kind of pre and post script around those answers to then generate an answer and do this conversational piece. Um, and then the thing that's nice is it also gives the source citations of why it's thinking what it's thinking. So it's not just, you know, one of the big problems with chat GPT is like, well, it was trained on 45 trillion documents from the internet. I don't really know why it said what it said. Whereas here, you know, we have basically instructed it that it's only using the data that's available from the search results from these documents. And so we're restricting that domain and then it's really citing them as it's giving a set of answers here. Um, and again, for those for those who have kind of played with, you know, chat GPT at, you know, kind of a, a deep level, we, you can think of it as, a, you know, we're doing the search and then we're basically taking your starting prompt, the search results, and then your ending prompt plus the conversation, putting that all together into like one big GPT-3 prompt to basically create this conversation. 
and then doing a little bit about maintaining state. So I can, you know, ask follow-up questions or like, you know, could you, you know, elaborate, right? And so, um, you know, it basically was remembering the context of like, oh yeah, the user and this person was just talking about Whitefly and, you know, I should really, you know, basically have a better question or, or a, a more full answer in terms of what it's doing. And so, um, you know, it's basically giving me a slightly longer answer and I can add, go back and forth and ask questions about this, just like you would with something like ChatGPT. Um, so that's the text portion. And then if you want, you can then do things like say, enable audio. Uh, and this is where you can basically pick your kind of providers. And if you've chosen UberDuck, right, basically, um, we we can allow on the back end you to basically put in any arbitrary voice if you want to do your custom trained one and then if you want to enable video output we just ask you to basically go ahead and update the video that we should use as the basis for the deep fakes um so this one is a very kind of full and somewhat complex recipe but the output allows you to do things like you know make these interactive characters which suddenly you can publish over directly on you know whatsapp uh Facebook or, or, you know, Instagram is sometimes there in some builds and sometimes not. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you want to embed these things, right, and so we make them as like embeddable controls. This is a healthcare related one. And so this little widget you can also put on your own page if you eventually have a site that's like describing your work. That was a long answer to your question. Okay. Okay. And, 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 Gabe, why don't you vaguely? And Gabe has no programming experience. With, okay. with, like right. He has a uh, Unity right. and Blender. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I was curious if there if there was anything that you were working on or or that is in your purview already uh, that has to do with um, with that has to do with like three D digital space, whether that's like motion tracking data um motion generation anything like that i know that it's kind of i didn't see any anything in what you guys showed us and maybe it's not that interesting <laughs> from an ai perspective but i was curious or it's not ready or we're not ready uh you're the first on well uh, on because it's the first request i've heard of it we do a bunch of stuff in like camera movement for animation generation, which, you know, we Ambika can kind of show off how those pieces works, but we haven't done it in the actual mocap or 3D space. And at this point, you're the first to ask for it. So that one's not on the roadmap yet. Okay, so Ambika, can you show that? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just share my screen and show you that. And that's what I was trying to explain that because it's, it hasn't been invented yet because the tech is there. Not because people don't want it or Unity or any of those people don't want it. It's just not ready for prime time. So this is basically uh, a very simple UI that uh, GUI has built over, a, actually over, a, uh, Ellen, it's over a collab file uh, that uh, there's a team, I think just a bunch of uh, developers who are working on it. Uh, so, but we've only uh, taken the sort of more, uh, more, uh, easy to access settings from that, which include uh, panning and zooming and uh, what FPS you need and things like that and the number of frames. So here what I've done is it's um, it's got two prompts and it's uh, 200 uh, frame animation running at 12 frames per second or I think 16 years, sorry. Uh, and what it's doing is, is it's just moving, uh, zooming through uh, Bombay uh, in Varsova, and then from there, it's uh, uh, it's going to change out the. Oops, I think I got the wrong link in. Uh, but it will. Let me just go to my history because I have all of them here. Sorry. Here. Uh, I made one specially for you guys for Warsaw. So let me just like try and find that. And one of the things I'm going to ask you, because yeah. we have programmers who are working with Gabe, is I'm very yeah. curious what Colab is, if that, that you you know, you you drew this from. Mm -hmm. Sorry, could you repeat that last I, I'm very curious what the Colab is, because the programmers probably just want to look at the Colab. Yeah, I can show you that, because for uh, many months I struggled, not struggled, but like 
broke my head on the collab and then uh, Sean and uh, Dave uh, got together and gave this tool to us. So the collab basically uh, is uh, is mm -hmm. not that complex, but like you just have to sit sit around and wait for all of the for all of the cells to run. And we've got mm -hmm. all of the same settings here from the animation tool for uh, 2D and 3D animation. Already so it's deform stable diffusion yes. is collab. Yes. Okay, yes. this one of Gabe's programmers note that, or you program right. deform stable. All right. all right, you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's what we're using. So it's just based on that. And is as they are updating, wrong? we are also updating it. Okay. Okay, thank you. It's just, you know, there are some people who yeah. are like, really want to look at the collab. Sure, sure. No problem. I can. But, but let's see the video, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what we've now done is been able to use uh, uh, the prompting within that space to kind of see, okay, uh, we can give it to you. Like, I don't know how you guys are thinking about your projects, uh, but perhaps if you want to see it moving from one city to another, if you give the right prompt, it will give you uh, an animation that will uh, kind of move into uh, the different city. Uh, what is also interesting to see is that uh, you can fix the prompt to a certain uh, to the same thing, but also change out the way the camera is moving across it. So I can also just say the same city, but I can then change out how much I want to zoom it, how much I want to zoom out, uh, how I'd like to pan uh, pan through that particular view. So I think it's been really interesting to see what's possible with this like really simple and quick narrative building work is really easy to do with this. Uh, so I've just done a few examples here, which might be easy to just uh, kind of get. This is just basic zooming in. Uh, let me just play the slideshow. So um, okay, is this from, um, you just make a prompt text and it's pulling from stable diffusion? Yes. It's taking a stable diffusion two with a checkpoint of protogen 2.2 for those okay. who are interested. So uh, do you have the ability to um, do uh, image to image with this as well? Not yet, but that is in, at least in, in my request pipeline to get video input in, uh, included in this. Uh, which would, I think, really make a lot of difference. Uh, but that's up to Sean. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and this is like uh, where yours, the zoom is fixed, but you're doing a little bit of a horizontal pan. Uh, I'm sorry, the video is a bit, my net's a bit slow here, so it might be a bit grainy, but we can share this uh, uh, slideshow with you. Yeah, don't don't worry about the brain, yeah. you know, because we're yeah. what they're watching is a, it's blown up on a big screen. Anyway, okay. So, got it. Yeah. so now this is going upward. So you can even do like you can take it diagonally away, or you know, you can stop at a certain point and then make it move. So all that is really easily possible uh, within just a couple of uh, settings within the prompting. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, if there's something specific about this tool you'd like to know what I'm doing for the prompting. If you need to know about negative prompting, I can tell that to you as well. Uh, because I think the team, uh, your cohort here is already sort of well-versed in that. Uh, so I can go into it a bit more. No, no, you you know, we haven't even begun into uh, prompting and negative prompting. So why don't you- Right, um, right. So let me that. just uh, go through- Can I make one little thing on animations yeah. before we move on? Yeah. Which yeah. is, uh, we are running um, against like A100s with 80 GB of video memory. Uh, and so they tend to be reasonably fast in terms of rendering time, assuming that like 30 of you aren't all trying to render simultaneously. Um, <laughs> and so, but that's definitely an issue as you guys are doing iteration is speed here matters, right? Um, yes. So Nick, go ahead. Yeah. And also the good thing about it is that uh, you can just hit run and then even close the tab, which you can't do on Colab because you'll have to keep your computer running even. Absolutely. So so this is really useful that way to just like run a couple of generations uh, and then wait for it and, you know, come back in like 10 minutes and see where you are. At. Uh, yeah, so, and those will show up in your history if you come and yeah. log in. Um, and then that's how they work. So, uh, so basically, we we are focusing more mainly on stable diffusion. So I've just done a little. The reason it's called Hitchhiker's Guide specifically is because we always start with the seed of forty two. Uh, so, uh, just the simplest way to go about prompting, I think, is that first you imagine in great detail what you're looking for. I think this is not specifically hard for uh, visual artists, uh, but what is 
what needs to be done after that is to know how to explain that to the to the AI, uh, primarily because sometimes even something as simple as a couple sitting in front of a fireplace uh, will be read by the AI as the fire is in the front and the couple is behind it. So it's just a matter of like how the AI is understanding language. So the structure will always be very simple, the medium you want, whether it's a photograph, it's a sepia photograph, 3D render, whatever, the subject that you're talking about, uh, the style of that particular render, and then what are the details to contextualize it. So uh, I can say, uh, say for example, Ellen is sitting in front of all of you. So I can say uh, a, uh, a picture of a teacher sitting, sorry, I don't know if you address yourself in uh, by saying teacher, but okay, facilitator uh, sitting uh, in the front with a group of young people behind. So then that is the structure that you need to kind of continue within your prompting. Uh, so, for example, here uh, I, I said, okay, a Bollywood film still of a cyberpunk astronaut uh, in a space costume, uh, hugging a non-binary human on the streets of Bombay uh, and in the style of Indian temple statues. So this kind of uh, gave it two kind of styles and then uh, to kind of add to those prompts, you have to like just add a bit more detail, like say, okay, want some cinematic lighting, etc. So thanks to our compare generator, which has like 10 current models right now, you can just like play all of them and see what style really works for you. Uh, so I was kind of uh, really taken by how Protogen was uh, generating the artifacts. And I went with that. And uh, then I was like, okay, now I've got this style, but now how do I build on this? How do I make sure that it looks as uh, close to what I'm looking for? So you can add more details, say, okay, uh, you want it to be 4K, 8K, whatever. So like constantly one needs to remember that it's like a 5 billion uh, image data set. So if you put in the right words, it will give you the image that you're looking for. But that's it's always a conversation between you and the AI. And I think, uh, I don't know uh, typically what your workflows are, but I worked a lot with uh, craftspeople and carpenters. So you have to know the language that they need to speak in. So I think it's the same with AI uh, as well. So here you see with the negative prompting, it gives me a certain kind of a look. Uh, but when I say, okay, I don't want uh, saffron colors, I don't want uh, deformed hands and fingers and whatever. So, and then it starts making the image a lot more crisp and a lot more uh, specific to what I'm looking for. I have observed that, say, for example, this image behind me with the octopus uh, arms around this young woman, uh, then it's easier to uh, just not put uh, negative prompts. Then you play with the idea that the negative prompts are not in your favor anymore. So that's what you can do, uh, do with this. Uh, in terms of quality, this is a very simple thing. Like if I have to explain it to you as artists, it's like doing an underdrawing with a blue light pencil is quality 10. And then uh, you bring it up with a, uh, with say a rotary ink and then you like draw with it. So that's 30. And then you add color to it. It becomes 40. Uh, you, you know, add layers of highlights and, uh, and uh, darker shades. It goes up to 100 and so on up to 200. And if you take it up even more, it's basically like if I overdrew on a painting and then it became a giant mess. So that's where you can also take it. But currently GUI will stop you at around 200. Uh, a guidance scale is uh, also, I think, in the same way, looking at a collaborator, like how creatively you want uh, the prompt to be uh, interpreted by the AI. So uh, something like four is giving me very, very close to the uh, prompt that I gave of two people hugging on the in the middle of the uh, street of Bombay. Uh, and it took certain words to be more important, like, say, cyberpunk, so which is why it gave uh, this guy this helmet, which looks really detailed. But then when I uh, took it up uh, in the scale to 25, it just like almost veered to like Indian God and uh, sort of that temple uh, prompt that we gave it. Uh, so usually I feel like keeping it around uh, 7 to 12 really gives you really good uh, images. Because um, upscaling is, sorry. What do you call scale? Are, are you are upscaling or weight? What, what, what do you mean by this that? This is weight. This is weight. Yes, you, you would call this weight. Of... Yeah. And then this is scale. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and then of course, uh, upscaling uh, your SD 2.1 and now allows you to do that like four times. So this is quite useful if you're thinking about printing or like doing something really high quality. Uh, 
and then of course aspect ratios play a, a really important role because all of your data is actually uh, trained on 768 by 768 images so as soon as you start uh, like expanding your aspect ratio uh, the images uh, start looking a lot dif a lot more different so here it's more like since i went vertically it was able to give me like a larger body and all of the prompts here continue to be the same you can check the each of the links when you feel uh, when you feel you have some time uh, but then at, at certain points, it starts like duplicating itself, which is what you see here, where the woman's face looks really similar. Or this really funny one where it's like she's hugging the bottom half of the same uh, same god. So these are some interesting like formats. And I think it's it could be interesting to play with it as an uh, as artist, because uh, particularly, say, in the mainstream format, they may find this to be uh, not as like not what they want for their final output but i think as artists we can really play with this idea quite nicely uh, now uh, things like style really change stuff up like you know you're in front of a greek temple you're in a hollywood still uh, you're in in the street of athens now you're not in bombay anymore uh, or uh, are you a cyberpunk astronaut versus are you a steampunk astronaut are you in the in the day or are you in the night so then I kind of uh, picked this particular one and then started to look at like camera angles, what will work best for you. I think uh, uh, keeping your strongest art history and film appreciation uh, personality up front while prompting is really helpful because it really quickly turns your prompts around from uh, just a visualization to something really like uh, something which is really speaking and is evocative and, and gives you what you uh, what you want. So same like here, this image, I keep going back to this one uh, behind me. Uh, it is then, uh, you know, like I said, OK, give me an archival image. Give me an image that looks like from an old Indian hospital, things like that. Um, so now I think you can really like push this a lot more with uh, taking these images and then uh, trying to see what what will happen if you do image to image. So, uh, Ellen, this is a oh, sorry, Sean. Before wants we to go there, one thing is yeah. you'll notice that I, I think in all of your images the seed is remaining the same. Yes. yes right. Yes, and so you're yes. just changing the prompt. And so yes. we have a regenerate uh, on each recipe, and and so that just so you guys know, we'll randomize the seed. But yeah, by I default, don't know what seeds are yet. They haven't gotten there. I'll. Most of I'll them. Yeah, yeah. We can just do a quick demo on that. I'm sure that'll that'll be yeah. useful. I think. So, uh, what other things you can do is that it'll it'll take this kind of base image and then try to build on top of it. But sometimes it'll change it entirely as well. So then, uh, what we have this wonderful tool also part of GUI, which is to remove the backgrounds, which allows you to just like take the the subject out of that particular background and then. Uh, shove them into new places that you think that they need to be. Uh, so uh, I can just do a quick demo for the regenerate that might be useful uh, for those who need to understand it. Um, so I think Sean, is there something else you're raising your hand? Yeah, no, that's it. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I'll lower my hand. So um, and then we'll share this deck and all of the examples with you guys too. And then you'll see that every picture and, and everything we've shown in here, you, you can see the backing AI recipe that was behind it. And so you can then can take that script exactly and then alter it a little bit and then see what you Absolutely. get. So here you can see that it gives a seed number. Now, so seed number, I think the easiest way to explain it is like, say, uh, if uh, Ellen tells you uh, in the class, uh, imagine a cup of water uh, on top of a table. So you're going to have an image in your mind, which will build slowly. Like think of yourself on like uh, the dullest day where you've not had your coffee and you know, you're just starting your day out and you already missed your bus. So you're late. So things are really slow. So think of it in that, in that way that, okay, there's this image that's forming in your mind. So the seed is that image. So is the water in a transparent cup? Is it on a table that's wooden? Because she hasn't specified any of those things. So then what happens beyond that? Uh, then you start building that image in your mind. So that's that seed image that came to you. That first visualization is what the seed does. And on uh, and when you see the uh, slides for quality, you will observe that. So that at the seed, it's given you a basic kind of um, composition. And then uh, it kind of builds on top of that. I think, Ellen, is that a easy enough way to explain it? Uh, and, you know? and, that, and that, well, that's a good way to explain seed and the one word version would be version control. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Version control. 
And so you can control the versions. And usually it starts with a specific number, usually 42 for that seems to be the default number. And it go, and it's infinite seeds, right? Or it's like 10,000. Yes. It's so, 2 billion. billion. Yeah. So you can have 2 billion variations of the glass of water on the table. Sort of. Sure. Come up, come up sure. here because they can't hear you. So, oh, oh, a technical question. I just, yeah. uh, I, I was just curious. Is this seed in, in the sense of random number generation? On your oh, sorry. Is, is this a seed in the sense of random number generation or? It's similar, but it's sort of the number that kicks off the generation process by stable diffusion. And so you'll find that if you keep the same seed but change the prompt, a bunch of details will remain the same. The, in general, the pose, the general construction, the layout. And so whereas if you change this seed, those there's a bunch of other variables that may be very extremely different. So yes, it is a random number generator, but it's it's the thing. If you look at this as a process of like denoising, it's a it's a it's a different starting process in that denoising process. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think the best way to uh, look at this is to just uh, wait for it to load and then uh, run it. One second. I know this all um, seems very overwhelming right now, but it won't in about two weeks. It'll be I fine. Don't don't worry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'll, I'm just going to uh, refresh it. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Okay, this is what happens when you tell people that, oh, I live in a very beautiful small city, but then the internet like doesn't uh, respond when you need to. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, let me see if there is some from the history I can pull out. Sean, I'm sorry, maybe I'll have to ask you to run this and it's just kind of conked at the exactly at the wrong moment. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. I can just no send problem. you the same link. Oh yeah, we did we yeah. So yeah, there's a credit system and I think she may have just run out. Uh all right. Um give me a second. Let me share my screen so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. And clearly I have too many tabs. Welcome to my life. Um, yeah, I'll uh, send that link back to you. On no, the no, channel. no, it's okay. really, we were just doing it here, correct? Um, yes, uh, so, slide 22. Slide uh. 22. So, if we want to go and uh play with this thing, uh, so you guys can do this, you can just find the slide that you want. There's a link there, uh, you come in, and then if you want to basically tap regenerate, um, it'll then go off and uh, basically make this happen. But if you want to regenerate and keep the same seed, is there a way that you can put in regenerate and the same seed? The regenerate changes the seed. That's the main thing it does. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so Ellen, it will be in your history. So say, suppose, you know, like five uh, iterations ago, you liked something, you can just go back to your history and then get that same uh, same run and then change based on that run. Uh, so, uh, so if you go to the, uh, Sean, can you go back to this run and then we will just change out something in this particular one. So now if we just change out streets of Bomb uh, Mumbai to say Athens, uh, and okay, Warsaw, and then, uh, instead of in the style of the, you know, just like do, yeah. Catholic <laughs> statues, no temples. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then, uh... Uh, and then I don't know. We can make it into a Hollywood film still, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, like the most of the form will look the same. It'll just be like the the style will change out a little bit more. And then we'll just open this up because you know it's always fun Why to not? see what everybody <laughs> thinks of this. Why not? Right. Um. And then we hit submit on that. And then basically, this thing will run through ten different models, and we'll see what kind of outputs we like. Um, and the model is your aesthetic indicator. You know, you can start shaping an aesthetic by seeing which models, you know, it's like your palette in a way. 
Yeah, almost more like a medium. But remember, it's cyberpunk. cyberpunk. Oh, okay. It's cyberpunk Warsaw. Cyberpunk astronaut, Polish non-binary god wearing a god costume, hugging a human. And then, so the only thing I'll say is some of these, um, just so you, so you know, uh, like this analog diffusion is really neat because it's it's really trained on only analog photography. So it, it, it ends up creating like a very like soft 70s vibe for a lot of it. Um, if you look at Open Journey, that's really based on the, the Mid Journey data set. So if you'd like in general, a lot of the stuff that you get out of Mid Journey, Open Journey is usually indicative of that. Uh, Dolly for artistic practices, we find tends to be just not as good, uh, I would say, uh, and is usually avoidable and is more expensive anyways. Oh, uh, look at that protogen. That's really weird what came out of that. Protogen is usually quite beautiful. Uh, you know, the straight. Protogen has a lot of uh, um, for, uh, models and fashion shoots in it. So yeah, if that's something interesting to people. If that's your vibe. And then Dreamlike also has a pretty interesting data set. So, you know, you basically take the ones you like and say, oh, you know, to Thomas's point of like, you know, if we wanted to say we want to take the protogen one, then, you know, we can come up here and kind of unselect the, the other ones that are less interesting to us. Right. So let's say we do that and then, you know, tweak away. Right. Um, and so uh, these are just the two that we had there. So we can then uh, and then basically go ahead and modify either in terms of the negative prompts or, or, or changing here. And, and that's the iteration process in general. So if I then I wanted to, you know, come down here and say, where did our little regenerate? Okay. So while it's running, it, 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 the regenerate button will come back when all of these other things have kind of come back. So if I want to then say, great, I want something different. Um, you know, I can run it again, see what happens with a different seed. Okay. Other so this, questions? This is great. So are there questions here from any of you? Or Christopher, do you have a question about any of this? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a lot, a lot of questions, but one thing is that um, earlier you mentioned something about the scripts and collab. So the things that we are running on this GUI, it's not necessarily that we can see the what is actually happening in the, in the background, right? No, it basically, we're just hitting the API models, right, that Colab is running against, right? Um, and so generally, we we don't, well, actually, you can see a pretty good, like, at least at our interface level, if you want to dig a little deeper, there are some tools where you can dig a bit deeper than what we've shown here. Um, but I mean, so let me just say that um, if if someone in the in the group, like, let's say that they really like one of your um the pipeline but then huh. they wanted to add a something slightly different in the middle like is that possible to do in terms of like changing a little bit or that's not possible yet i mean at a code level uh, one of the things that we have done is um i'll show you actually so like we did an example of this from another person where we basically used collab books plus the gui recipes to then make that happen Right. And so if you go into help. and we'll send you a link to this too. So if you go into help.gui.ai uh, and then you click here. So like we had a customer that was basically wanting to take a Google query, summarize all the results and make an image from the results and then generate that picture. And so what we then did is we basically said, okay, if you can use the GUI API recipes for your collab. And so the first thing here was to use our SEO summary tool, which basically takes a query and then gets back uh, the results. And then you can use this thing to basically run, um, to basically take those results and generate an image prompt of them, right? Um, and then we took the, finally that image prompt and then use that to generate the pictures. And so right now, basically the way to do it is, you know, all of our recipes are themselves uh, exposed as APIs. And then you can basically use those inside of Colab if you want to basically put something in between. Um, we have not yet built in. We have some early prototypes of it, but they're too ugly to share of, you know, basically allowing you to, to, to modify the pipelines directly inside of us. Cool. Okay, Thanks. Yeah. You already don't worry about what you said. 
And for the programmers, I'm sure you're thrilled and you'll look at the API calls at a different time, you know. Um, but you know, the advantage here is, you know, basically you only have to get one key and then you can kind of set up any of the recipes that you have here and then link them together with whatever code you want in between. Nice, real yeah. nice. That's wonderful that you share the APIs. That's that's really great. There's a lot of people, uh, a lot of the um, the coders here who are working with the artists are sort of very hungry to look at the APIs. Yeah. And then there is a set of API docs. And in general, all of the parameters that we have usually map pretty directly to whatever it is that we're calling underneath at, at the model level. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Some of these projects are going to become uh, interactive installations that utilize AI, but are actually going to be live. I mean, you know, this is an iteration of groups of people who and uh, are, are trying to, you understand this very well from Dara, who have never met, who are coming up with the ideas. You, you, you know that process because Dara um, and Archana have run similar things to what we're doing, but in India. So they're very used to this whole process where nobody knows each other and the concept is not that strong and they get thrown together and they have to bring things together. So this is, like I said, it's a, it's a known process and they've done some really incredible work in India. I wish I could come to that thing next, next week, but you know, there's only so much time. So are there any more questions here from anyone? Because I know, I mean, you know, I know it's like overwhelming to see this. You're going, oh my God, that was great. I don't understand it. <laughs> Which is, is okay at this point. You know, we'll, we'll drill down on it. But, you know, do you have any, in terms of your project, do you have any concept questions right now? Okay. The the thing I, I want to share with uh, you guys in terms of the, um control net and the work I'm doing you know I, I've I'm I, and I'll share this with you in about two or three weeks I'm on the verge of actually generating uh using the same kind of um uh ping methodology of moving the pings forward um the kind of aesthetic I want in terms of image to image using the ping content. That's why I asked about image to image because that's what I, I, I want for the project I'm doing. And I'm doing that on the back end uh, with a server of someone who's at Hong Kong Poly U. And so I'm sort of um, paralleling that except I want, but I specifically wanted image to image. So I can talk to you guys once that's, uh, a little more set up about what I've done with that, you know? I'm, I'm, sure, I'm... I was just going to say, one of the things that we can show now is, you know, with both the edit and image with AI and this kind of, you know, do a Google search result, we've got the instruct picks to picks, uh, which is like a pretty good one for, you know, it's kind of just two weeks earlier than control net. Um, but this is probably how it would be. So basically you do any Google image search that you want, which is, I don't know, um, we could do Moscow or you know, Kiev, right? Skyline. If anyone right. wants to use it, little movies, this is important for you to see this one. With fireworks uh, in the sky, right? Um, so basically what this does is this will just you know, do a Google search, right? That basically says, give me, you know, whatever image you get for the Kiev skyline. Um, and then if you want to kind of, uh, you know, as it, it's basically, it's getting back this image URL. So this is the Kiev skyline. Um, and then it's going ahead and then it's applying, right? Um, this instruct picks to picks, which is very similar to what you talked about, um, to basically then do image to image on top of that. Um, and then you can go down here and again, you can do negative prompts. You can say, I want a bunch of different outputs. You can do all this quality piece. Um, and then, you know, there's a, given that we're doing a, a Google search lookup, you can change the locale if you want to, those things too. Okay. And so, you know, this is an example where it took that image and then it's applying fireworks above the skyline using so this image. Where would the animation of that render? Or well, this is not. This is for still images at this point. We have we haven't hooked this up into the animation pipeline. Um, 
but we'd be happy yeah, to talk yeah, to you on that. Yeah, no, because Sean, you know, that that's that's the obstacle that I'm running into at this moment is, you know, the enormous render power for the animation imagery and the render time that it takes to do that. I mean, I I, I understand that. And that's sort of the what I would call the brick wall at this moment, which I mm -hmm. think will be soon. So that's why I was very curious. And I think for the people here, the picks to picks if they want to do something would be really great. You know, I'm just, you know what I'm doing. I'm going, well, you know, and I'm working. I've, I've shown you guys, so you know, I just wanted to share that because we're online. So- I think the um, compare models, Ellen, sorry to interrupt, but uh, specifically because we are also working with a design school in uh, in Bangalore, is we're finding that, see, compare image, compare uh, LLMs, the, these larger tools are really helpful for the students to then zone into what they are really interested in for their specific project institutions. So especially if they're coming from backgrounds where they haven't yet played with AI so much. So mm -hmm. like say there's a compare uh, compare large language models tool, which allows you all of them or the image tools. In that GUI, might be just a good way to start them off. And then okay. you yeah. have that in GUI, right? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. I can send that to you on an email separately. So. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do. So if you just go to the homepage and then you click on, so this is our homepage, and then you just click on explore workflows. Uh, all, all of them are here. And then, you know, these comparison pieces. So you can compare the AI image upscalers, right? Uh, and then, you know, this is the edit. Um, but then, uh, here, so this is the voice generators, if you want to see what different topics do there. Um, and then you can compare large language models here. Um, and so That's right now, these are just the open AI ones. Uh, we do have Google Flan and you know, those Facebook ones will be coming out so shortly too. And so it's really interesting to compare, like this just came out four days ago, which was the chat GPT API. And so to compare that one against DaVinci, which is the previously um, most advanced one, it, it's, there are some interesting differences between them. Uh, the chat one is really good for chat, tends to be less creative. Um, and then you can go and tweak some uh, other settings here in terms of how how crazy you want to basically your text generation get but you know all of these are available right for you kind of to play and experiment with your own prompts and then again everything is available via an api key so once you kind of tweak you know the run that you've got in your particular example you can then call this thing a thousand times inside of your own installation um, and so to give you an example of how somebody else is using this as an installation right so one of our you know folks that we're working with is this guy isaac who's a professor out of um, University of, of the Emirates, I think. And so what he's doing is he's got a crazy installation where he's basically got a plant, right, that is giving off electrical signals, right, um, that are MIDI notes. And then so what he's doing is he's then made a bot, which is Chiron, which is his interactive bot. And then what we've done is we've just hooked together two LLMs. So we, one, we translate those MIDI note sequences to you know, English emotions that we suspect the plant is feeling. So, you know, we're recording things like what signals is it giving off when it's very hot? What signals is it giving off when it's very dry? What is it when it's very wet, right? And then basically translating that into text and then using that to for the plant to then talk with the bot. And so the installation is you then walk into this space and you're seeing a projection of a conversation between the plant and this bot happening in real time as those two are, are talking back and forth. And to do that, he's basically, you know, every 10 seconds using the MIDI notes that are coming off of this, this receiver that's on top of the electromagnetic cells of the plant. He's calling us. And then 10 seconds later, we basically give him back what does this Chiron bot think about uh, what the plant said. So that's the installation. It's very fun and interesting. And Thank you for sharing that. In a month. I get a lot of notes here. Now I know we're at time and we don't want to keep you. And also yeah. uh, they shut this building down in about 20 minutes. Okay. Literally locked the building. So <laughs> it's oh, nice. a surprise. Uh, but uh, you know, you said, you mentioned you wanted to sort of mentor some of the projects. Um, if once they start going and developing, um, how would that work? What what, what do you foresee? Because they're not quite ready for prime time yet, for sure. 
maybe like in a few weeks uh, or something, you know? I think the easiest way to do it is we've got a Discord link, right? That's just at the top of the site. And so I, I would just add stuff into, you know, support, right? And just keep your questions coming there. And then if it makes sense, we can do another session like this. I think okay. that would be okay. easier. And we're pretty okay. good at responding to questions. Just okay. share your URL of what you're working on is all I'd say. Right. We're, we're not there yet. This is only the second meeting, but we will get there within a month. And yeah. we are deeply grateful for your time, your enthusiasm, your interface, and what all of you are doing. We're thrilled. Let me tell you, we're doing backflips, although everyone's sitting down. <laughs> Okay. So so I think we better go because like we we they 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 start locking doors. I mean they just like it's like okay, it's over, you're out, get out. It's like that's how it is here. Bye. And they they lock us out. So we gotta go. Wow. So we'll send over links to everything that we sent today. Uh, and we can't wait to see what you build. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.